Hey guys, welcome back to Blue Sky Flight. My name is Bob. If you've been following along on the channel, you know that I'm in the process of building an airplane. I'm building a RV-14. It's an experimental aircraft made from a kit manufactured by the Vans Aircraft Corporation. Uh, Vans has been in business for decades. There's about 10,000 or more of their airplanes flying in service, so it's a pretty reliable airplane. The RV-14 is one of their newest kits. And if you're new to the channel, this is just part of the many videos that I've done. I started the channel about a year ago, basically just to document the process and offer up any helpful tips that I could come up with as I was renovating a Piper Arrow that I bought. It's a 73 Piper Arrow and I decided to go ahead and redo the whole interior of the aircraft. And in that process, you know, I was searching online for some tips and things like that. And there were some things out there, but there wasn't a lot. So I just decided I would go ahead and document my process and then share anything that I learned along the way. So there's lots of videos on the channel that cover that whole process start to finish. Then there's a bunch of flying videos. Uh, did several trips in the Arrow up to Oshkosh, camped out, had a good time. So. Got some videos covering that and then just some other fun flights that I've done. This series of videos is following me, like I said, building the RV-14 aircraft. So the part I'm up to right now is the horizontal stabilizer for the aircraft. So follow along, let's get started on that. So in case you were wondering why they recommend having two build tables, there's your answer. They say it all can be done in a garage. This is just the horizontal stabilizer. Wings are gonna be a lot bigger. Fuselage can be a lot longer. <laughs> I don't know. Guess we'll find out. So, so far I've completed the vertical stabilizer for the aircraft and the rudder for the aircraft. So that gives me control and stability about the vertical axis of the airplane and yaw control of the rudder. And now I'm starting in on the horizontal stabilizer. That'll give me stability along the lateral axis of the aircraft for pitch stabilization. As with every component in this airplane build, the first steps in building a horizontal stabilizer involve a lot of deburring and smoothing edges. So I begin with the rear spar subassembly. Using the 3M wheel, I smooth out all the edges of the spar itself as well as the spar doubler. Where the outside edges are stamped, there are some small bumps that you can feel and also see every few inches along the perimeter. So first I run the edge flat against the wheel to smooth down these even with the surface. Then I gently pull the edges along the wheel at a slight angle to create a smooth, slightly rounded transition from the face of the material to the edge. In the areas that I can't get into with the large wheel, I'm using a Dremel to accomplish the same task. I've ordered some small 1 inch and 2 inch 3M wheels from Cleveland Tools, which I'll use in the future to make this easier and produce a finer edge. For now, I follow up the Dremeled areas and other edges with a Scotch-Brite pad to get the final smooth edges that I'm looking for. I complete the same process with the front spar and then the very large collection of nose ribs and inspar ribs. All of this deburring is a substantial part of the build. It takes a lot of time, but it's a really important part of the build to reduce the risk of stress fractures and also make everything fit together correctly. So this is where YouTube TV comes in handy. With everything smoothed out and ready, I can move on to the initial assembly of the rear spar. Because of the way this will ultimately connect to the tail of the airplane. There's a correct top and bottom to the spar. So I orient the spar and mark the top and bottom according to the instructions. With the rear spar doubler clicked to the spar, I match drill and final drill all the holes as indicated. And then I do the same thing for all of the hinge brackets. There are a few holes which need to be countersunk for flush rivets later on, and a few that need to be final drilled to a larger size. The next step called out is riveting all of this together. So for the most part, the subassembly on this rear spar is done. I've got the 
holes counter sunk here in the middle that I needed to just finish the final drilling the number 12 holes that are also in the middle. Spar doublers, Pleco to the back, that's all been match drilled. All of uh, the hinge brackets, they're all in place. Those have all been match drilled as well. So the next step in the process is to mark everything, their position, their orientation, to make sure all the holes are exactly lined up later when we put it back together. Then the next step in the instructions is to remove all of these hinge brackets just to drill out, do a final size drill on the, uh, the hole where the hinge part goes through there. And then you would reassemble and rivet it all together. That's the part that I'm going to skip for now. Ideally, what I'll be able to do is leave this clear code together instead of riveted together and then move forward with all the other instructions with the front spar and some of the other parts to get to the point where you test fit the skin and final drill all those holes if those need to be final drilled. That's what I've been doing on the other parts so far. That way I can disassemble everything after all the holes are drilled, deburr everything and prime everything, and then kind of go back to where I left off in the instructions with each shut section um, and pick up and move forward. So what I've been doing in the instructions so far is I'll go ahead and I'll check off each item on the instructions as I do them. That way, when I get to that point, like I'm going to do here, where I'm going to stop for reassemble uh, and riveting it all together, uh, I know that's where I left off in that part. So I'll kind of do that in each section, and then when I get to the part where I'm going to prime everything and then pick back up, I'll basically go all the way back to the beginning of the instructions and see where I left off in each section so they don't miss a step before proceeding to something later on in the instructions. So far it's worked out pretty good with a rudder and a vertical stabilizer. The only challenge with that is that this is supposed to be riveted together. I'll have it clecoed together and sometimes the clecos can get in the way. So that could present a challenge and if it's something that I uh, can't kind of work around, then I may just have to, uh, to prime this piece and rivet it together and then move forward. But we'll see how that progresses. Next up is the inboard hinge bracket assembly. This is the primary hinge bracket, which will connect the elevator to the horizontal stabilizer. So in this next step, I'm gonna go ahead and complete this uh, hinge bracket assembly that will go in the center of the rear spar. And for this one, since it's already powder coated and painted, I'll go ahead and complete the process of actually riveting this assembly together. Um, and then in the next step after that, you're supposed to bolt that to the rear spar. I'll hold off on that part of it until I get the rear spar primed and actually riveted together. It's a pretty simple assembly consisting of two brackets sandwiching a bearing in between. I just need to clico it all together, final drill the holes, disassemble, deburr, and then rivet it all together. The instructions make a note to clamp the flanges of the two hinge brackets to a flat surface to make sure that they remain square to each other while you're riveting it together. There are two spar caps which will add strength to the center of the front spar, as well as two stringers which will join up all of the internal ribs. These all need to have material trimmed away from the edges and then finished smooth. Like before, I'll make the initial cuts with a bandsaw just a little away from the line. And then I'll use the wheel to clean up and remove all the excess. And then I'll smooth out all of the edges on all of them. So I've got the first couple pages of the instructions done. Rear spar assembly, that's all put together. The hinge bracket, that's complete. Next up is an assembly of the front spar, and it's got some spar caps that will go inside to add strength to that, as well as a spar doubler, similar to what we did on the rear spar. Just got done deburring all this stuff, including all the lighting holes, cleaning all that up. That's a lot of work, not a lot of fun. So I do that off camera, um, but that's all done. So now I can start to assemble this structure. I think it's gonna work out with kind of doing all these little sub assemblies separate, getting them to about 90% of where they're at, and then pull everything back apart, prime all the parts, and do it all at once. I think it's gonna work out okay. So these little spar caps go inside of the spar like this, and they basically just double up the strength of the center of the spar. 
So to center it up, what they want you to do is make a little mark here, 3 sixteenths of an inch from the end of that. And then I'm supposed to center that mark up in the 28th hole from this end. And then to make sure that that's correct, if I go look at the 28th hole from that end, uh, it should just be covered up by the other end of this thing. That'll get everything centered up on there and that process. Escape. All I gotta do is count. Spar caps don't have any holes in them, so they first get held in place by using clamps along the flange. Similar to regular Clicos, these little clamps you can use like a Clico, but in a place where you don't have a hole to stick it through. Like this. So what I'm going to end up doing is mounting this piece in there and then I'll drill through the holes that exist in the spar to make holes in the end cap. So, the line that I drew should cover up that hole right there. Nice. And then, if I get out here, That makes sense. So the process is first clamp the spark cap inside here, um, and then we'll match drill all the holes out here in the web. We'll then click all those holes in the web to pull the spark cap super tight down against the web inside here, and then we'll come back and we'll match drill all the holes in the flange on the outside. That way, we make sure everything is nice and tight against the web of the spark. out and that that took some doing um, so I debated a little bit about getting the pneumatic drill um, they say because so much of the RV 14 now is pre-punched sim similarly with the RV 10 that you can probably build the whole kit with just a regular cordless drill uh, and so far that has probably been the case but this is and you definitely need a drill press so. though um, but just as far as the hand drill I'd say that's pretty accurate, but this is definitely a case where the pneumatic drill has paid dividends because this spar cap stuff is pretty thick and as you saw, um, even with a high speed pneumatic drill, it took a while to get through those holes. There's a lot of them. Um, so yeah, I think it's worth the, spending the extra bucks on the pneumatic drill. And I'm sure there's other places in the, in the kit where it's going to pay off, so there's a tip, I guess. All right, so all the holes are drilled in the web. So now I need to take it back apart, deburr all those holes, and then click them together. I'm gonna deburr them first, make sure they click them nice and tight, and then I can come through and drill out all the holes that are along the flange. But I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I've had enough for one day. So I went through and uh, deburred all the holes on both sides of the spar cap, and then also I deburred the inside of the spar where we drilled all that stuff out. So the next step now is to take, put the spar cap back in. Uh, I will click the spar cap 
down to the web on this, um, and then that way it'll be perfectly lined up so that I can go ahead and match drill all the holes through the spar cap using the, uh, the spar flange as a guide. So that's the next step. And I'm gonna put Clecos in every hole uh, just because I wanna make sure that the spar cap is perfectly flush all the way down to make sure the holes are lined up perfect along the, along the flange there. With the Clecos along the web and also clamps along the flange, holes are now match drilled along the other surface using the spar flange holes as a guide. Then I simply rinse and repeat this for the other spark cap. Now the front spar doubler gets attached and lots of holes get drilled. This includes a couple of quarter inch holes that will be done using a drill press. So I've got the last of the holes drilled into the spar doubler through to the spar um, and everything else has been match drilled so that's all done the only step left uh, I've got to countersink some holes along the top and bottom flange of the spar and then um, I've got about a dozen holes in the middle of this thing that also have to get some countersinks done for some flush head rivets that'll go on later uh, but once that's done, the whole thing gets pulled back apart, and then I can deburr everything, and the front spar assembly is ready to head for priming. So that's good. So that makes the front spar uh, ready for priming. I've got the rear spar sitting over there. That's all ready for priming. I'll check ahead in the instructions, see what else I can do as far as any other parts that can get lined up um, before any of this stuff needs to be riveted together to do a test fitting for the skin. Ideally, I'd like to keep this stuff clico together while I do the skin test fit and drill those holes so that the skin and all of the other parts can get primed as well. So I'm going to skip ahead in the instructions, read through all that stuff a little bit and see if I can do that. If not, I may have to do two priming batches, one with the spars, get those done, get all that stuff riveted together, and then continue on with the plans to get the skins on, match drill all that, and then prime. But we'll see. I just hate setting up for painting twice if I can avoid it. It's my least favorite thing. Well, deburring is not much fun either, but the painting is just kind of a mess. There are a few cradles that will need to be constructed for the next steps. These will be used to support the skins and the sub-assembly consisting of all the ribs as everything gets riveted together. The cradles are pretty simple to build out of a little bit of the leftover plywood and then some 2x4s that are used for support. This is one reason they tell you to keep the wooden crate that all the parts were shipped to you in. I uh, previously broke mine down, sanded all the edges, and you end up with a pretty nice pile of scrap wood. You use the shape of a combined nose and inspar rib to trace a cutout on the plywood. And the instructions mention that the shape doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. It's just for supporting the work. It doesn't have any actual bearing on the final shape of the horizontal stabilizer. So I got that done, and then I used some duct tape to provide a smooth inner surface for the skins to rest on. So this is where I left off for the week. Uh, reading ahead, there's only a couple of holes that need drilling and countersinking before I start to rivet the ribs and the sub-assembly to the skins. So time permitting, next week I'll tackle those holes and then pull everything apart, deburr as needed, and get everything primed. So that's a wrap on the first four days building the horizontal stabilizer. Please hit that like button to help support the channel if you would. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.